This video was made during the 2023 WGA SAG After Strikes. None of these discussions would be possible without media made by artists currently struggling against studios that would rather see them homeless than pay them the value of their work that makes those same studios hundreds of millions of dollars. Support the strikes. Well, you got a reaction at you, you've got to give them that. You give them exactly what you wanted, you played right into his hands. It seems they kind of despise Barbie as a fascist emblem, as we'll get to it. I have like pages and pages of notes on this horrific piece of I mean, my goodness. I don't see Scott on the floor. You're off, we're off way for it. 114 minutes of spiteful, bitter, mean-spirited, borderline unhinged hatred of men and everything even vaguely associated with them. This is an assault on not just Ken, but all men. They're trying to kiss up to the Chinese Communist Party because they want to make money selling the movie in China. An hour and 30 minute long male humiliation ritual. You are a beta male c if you pay money to see this. Third wave, intersectional, subversive, man-hating, power-hungry, destructive feminism type of that. There was one Korea occupation that was conspicuously absent of all the bodies that represented bodies. Homemaker. And it was the homemaker. <laughs> <laughs> Long time viewers of this channel know that there are only two things in this world that have ever really mattered to me. Barbie and Ken. And it's been f***ing ruined. There, there's no easy way to put this. Uh, Barbie has been, been made woke. They, they made Barbie woke. Let me show you this. And they've woked it. They've woked it up. They've got Barbie in rainbows now. And Ken is just... They've turned Ken into a joke. I think a lot of men know that for a long time, Ken has been a kind of masculine icon. They've just made him into another emasculated simp. Emasculated simp. Ken is a simp. Barbie's ruined. It's ruined. They made it woke. I'm sorry if it seems like I've been crying. I just rewatched Guardians 3. In 2009, development began on a planned live action film adaptation of the popular Mattel children's toy brand, Barbie, because this is what all mass media is now. Candyland, Clue, Monopoly, and so many more. I literally just myself. First to be written by Sex and the City writer Jenny Biggs, then Juno writer Diablo Cody, then starring Amy Schumer, then starring Anne Hathaway. Mattel did not have a clear concept for this movie. The film eventually came together with Margot Robbie in the starring role and headed by Patty Jenkins. Scratch that, Greta Gerwig. This is the thing about a Barbie movie. How do you package it to a modern audience? You can make something safe and silly, basically interchangeable from the cavalcade of Barbie TV tie-ins that have already been made, except with a times the budget, and maybe pull in some younger kids who kind of just wanted to see a Minions movie or watch Skibbity Toilet videos, or you can make something self-aware and reflective of the culture surrounding Barbie that might push the brand in a new direction, interest some older viewers, and provide some genuine commentary, like what art does. This is further complicated by the fact that the Barbie brand has always come with both praise and criticism from a variety of different perspectives, from conservatives unhappy at a brand pushing feminine independence and anti-family values, to progressives pointing out the unhealthy ideals pushed by the brand, made worse by the early lack of representation and the fact that this is supposed to represent body image diversity. And you also have to do all this in the confines of a Mattel branded product, inherently limited in the scope of its commentary by the approval of a faceless corporation that also does the bad things that may want to be commented on. It's kind of an impossible balancing act, so Gerwig decided to embrace the contradiction. Doing the thing and subverting the thing. Barbie is now out and is a massive critical and commercial success that does function as both a goofy, colourful, musical road trip adventure movie that also uses the material to provide commentary, both on Barbie and the world around it. And everyone likes it, and nobody is getting mad about it at all. Barbie is yet another beloved children's franchise to be infected by 
uh, the feminist mind virus. Mind virus. Barbie is like the deformed, mutated rage child of Captain Marvel, Ghostbusters 2016, and She-Hulk. They they won't stop until they've destroyed everything. They already destroyed Mario. It's in line with what you'd expect from feminist, leftist perspectives in movie writing. In fact, there's a point in the movie where Peach literally says Mario is nobody and they cheer. They destroyed the Ghostbusters. And now they're even destroying... Ken. They've destroyed Ken. So the Barbie movie came out, and there's a lot of opinions about it. Somehow it's it's done very well, despite the fact that, as we all know, uh, when things go woke, they always go broke. It's one of those movies. The agenda movies. The ones that beat you over the head with a really messed up message. The kind of movie the internet loves, but then general audiences go and see it and they realize it's a mistake midway through the opening credits. And then the movie tanks because what people in the Hollywood bubble think is good really isn't to those of us in the real world. Week one, this thing is going to clean up at the domestic box office. My prediction is going to just absolutely fall off a cliff after that. The repeat business on this movie is going to be non-existent. <laughs> And I've watched the, the negative responses to the film, and I'm going to say I think, there's, I think there's layers to this. Now, the first layer, admittedly, is one we've probably trodden a little bit before, which is conservatives not knowing how uh, movies work. The basic sort of premise of the film, politically speaking, is that men and women are on two sides of the divide, and they, and they hate each other. And literally the only way you can have a happy world is if the women ignore the men and the men ignore the women. In the end... Not to skip ahead, Barbie Land just gets restored and the men are still subservient. That's the best, that's the best version of the world. Pink felt like I'm ready to bend. I'm a ten, so I pull in a can. Boy, Daddy, stay sticky. That's not the ending of the film. I don't think he got it. We'll see. I'm beginning to get the impression that Ben Shapiro didn't understand the Barbie movie. I don't think he got it. Barbie tells the story of Barbie, or more specifically, stereotypical Barbie, who represents, in the film's words, the thing people imagine when they think of a Barbie, who struggles with what she increasingly suspects is a restrictive false world, and that seems to be falling apart around her. <gasps> So she goes to the real world where she finds real problems still being faced by real women. This appears to be the source of the problem. The basic thing to understand with the Barbie movie is that there is Barbie land. And Barbie land is this kind of idealized fantasy world with, you know, Professor Barbie, President Barbie, uh, living in these big pink palaces. Uh, but there's also something that feels kind of artificial about it. And Barbie starts to feel this kind of anxiety around it, this kind of existential dread. And then this results in her desire to go out into the real world. The real world where she encounters a lot of, you know, real world modern problems. Problems of sexism. Problems that, from her perspective, Barbie had fixed for the world. Barbie had solved all of these problems by liberating girls and making them realize all the different roles in society that they can fill. You see baby doll heads exploding against each other, against the ground, just... And I could not help but see that as a pretty apt allegory of how Hollywood likes to treat babies. <laughs> you know, Motherhood. Usually it's unborn babies that they want to kill. <laughs> um, Shad, this is a Barbie film review. What are, we, what are we doing here? But things are a bit more complicated than that. She eventually encounters her actual owner, who is also grappling with these kinds of existential fears, only for them to go back to Barbie land and find that now the Kens are, are loving it in this new, more patriarchal society. The idea is that Barbie land is kind of influenced by what's happening to the Barbie brand in the real world. Uh, so when Ken dolls suddenly start outselling Barbie dolls, uh, this results in a kind of shift in the power balance of that society. Now here's what you gotta understand. In the world of Barbie, the Kens are subservient to the Barbies. They exist only, for the most part, as accessories to the Barbies. Uh, they don't get to have their own positions of power. They don't get to have their own kind of roles that they fulfill. Now you might be thinking, with your critical movie brain, that maybe they're going to make a point with this. Maybe they're going to have it be that Barbie land exists as a kind of opposite contrast to the real world, where in Barbie land, the Kens are treated the way that 
the women of the real world are presented in the film, uh, and that therefore the resolution in which the Barbies and the Kens kind of come to terms with each other, Barbie speaks to Ken, Barbie apologizes to Ken for his own experiences, and then they both kind of learn to exist as individuals, that maybe this would serve as a kind of thematic contrast to the real world Barbie world. Uh, and the, the, when they make a joke about how the Kens want to be on like the Supreme Court of Barbie Land, and they're like, oh, maybe someday, you know, like it, like it's a, like it's an inversion, like it's an inversion to make a point. Basically everything that men do in your world, women do in ours. Now, a lot of conservative commentators, weirdly enough, um, don't understand that this is the point of the film. From the outside, it looks like a parody of Barbie and the outdated stereotypes associated with the doll. But in reality, it's a vapid statement on why men are bad and they're unnecessary. In this film, men are an accessory who shouldn't be allowed to vote. Yeah, that's in this movie. Barbie's message is that the only solution to all this dreadful patriarchal state of affairs is obviously for women to rule the world, and preferably do so on their own without horrible men to ruin it, or ruin them and their lives. The idea is that actually what Barbie land is supposed to be is what feminism is. Because in the feminist world, everything is pink, and only women get to have any positions of power. If you've read the, the big book of feminism, this is, you know, page one stuff. And the takeaway is that men deserve to be oppressed mm -hmm. in the way that they perceive themselves having been oppressed. That's disgusting. That's not equality. I thought feminism was about equality, Nathan. It's not. This is the evidence and proof that modern day feminism isn't about equality, it's about power, okay? It's about power. Okay. Shad, I'm sorry to report that for the second time uh, you have failed to understand the message of a film based on a children's franchise. Traditional male hero being made look like a goofy idiot. I think he likes the film. He's like all excited about it. Barbie is so misinterested. Like, they, they hate men. Uh, so there has been a bit of an outrage surrounding this film, and I do think it comes in these kind of two levels to it. I think there's a lot of people that are upset by the depiction of Barbie Land, the depiction of this world that's kind of matriarchal, a world where these Barbies have power over the Kens, and the Kens are treated as kind of secondary. And on the other hand, there's a certain amount of criticism of how the real world is depicted, a world in which women are still treated with a lot of disrespect, a world that hasn't necessarily been fixed by the proliferation of toys that can tell little girls they can be whatever they want to be. That despite these kind of idealized products, um, that this isn't going to just solve the problems that these young girls are dealing with. Now what's funny about that side of the criticism uh, is that that's actually the closest the film comes to being a critique of modern liberal feminism, of a type of feminism that tells young women that they can overcome issues of sexism and inequality through consumerism, through the market. Girl boss feminism is a term that has increasingly caught on as a pejorative over the last few years, and look, has it been used a lot to just shit on any woman who happens to succeed in any field? Yes. But I do think there's still a good reason it exists. There is a specific strain of girl power feminine empowerment that pushes the idea of women finding liberation through independence in the market. Through showing their value not as mothers and homemakers, but as athletes or scientists or artists and entrepreneurs. And it's pretty funny how often the people held up as icons of this are also products of extreme nepotism and generational wealth. This sort of points to the problem, that this is a kind of feminism that doesn't really change challenge the norms that lead to large numbers of people continuing to live subjugated lives. That all it essentially does is transition women into a work environment that exploits them in the same ways as everybody else. Barbie has essentially been an icon for this simplified view of empowerment, and of course it's simplified because it's a doll for children. But it's still a lingering issue, and if there's anything I do genuinely love about the movie, it's that it directly addresses that. Liberal feminism didn't solve all the problems women had. Token representation in the market wasn't the solution to societal issues. Things aren't exactly how they were, but in large part, it's a coat of pink pain on a still unsatisfied population, still in a perpetual conflict. All of this leaves me curious about the future of mass corporate 
corporate media, which is great because today's sponsor is Curio- Today's sponsor is Raycon. This week Raycon sent me a box of their long-lasting noise-isolating wireless earbuds and just look at these things. Look what I'm doing. Look, I could, look. I could fight a man in these things. Look what I'm doing here. Look at this. Raycon is disrupting the electronics industry with wireless earbuds starting at half the price of other premium brands. Giving you 8 hours of playtime plus seamless Bluetooth pairing so you can go about your day looking for trinkets and treasures and things like that. That's what I like to do with my day and Raycons are perfect for the experience. Use earbud tap functions to toggle between free customizable sound profiles. Choose between a range of fun colors and patterns with a variety of fit options. I chose black. And on top of everything else, Raycons come with a 30-day free return guarantee, so there's no harm in clicking the link down in the description below or going to buyraycon.com slash jacksane for 15% off of your first order. Thanks again to Raycon for sponsoring this section of the video. Buy yours now. Please, please, please. It's actually probably the closest the film comes to making the kinds of points that a lot of conservatives would otherwise be making when it comes to feminism. Not to say that obviously the film is anti-feminist, but certainly that it's criticizing a form of feminism that tries to solve systemic issues through consumption. But I know this might come as a shock to some people. Um, this is not actually how the film has been uh, interpreted. But you know, patriarchy bad, matriarchy good. We've learned nothing from this, I guess. Why does no? Why can no one? <laughs> I think the lesson is that we should fund our public education systems. I would say that we should be funding English classes. Ever noticed that feminism only exists in first world countries? So the thing is, I do actually have uh, some issues with the film. <laughs> I think there's stunning hypocrisy in the outrage around Barbie being anti-man when I don't see any of this energy directed at B-Movie, which is a movie in which a woman literally leaves a man for a bee. So as far as this depiction of Barbie Land or whatever, I feel like it's just a very straightforward joke. It's very straightforwardly just like, oh, what if we reverse the situation Here's what it would look like. Look at how we're, we're sort of using the insecurities of men to kind of pit them against each other so that then we can then discriminate against them on a kind of legal level. It's just a, it's just a very straightforward um, joke that's being made. They've got no inherent value, they contribute nothing, they have no power or say in how their society is run, and they're basically looked down on as a bit silly and irrelevant by the Barbies. Oh my goodness, what could the writers possibly be trying to tell us about their views on men? I really don't feel like it's that hard to understand this. The sort of thing that I feel like you would only have a feeling of outrage towards um, in a kind of reflexive um, feelings-based way. The message here is so thick that plus-sized Barbie would make fun of it. Yes, Ken is the bad guy. He's the villain because he's a man. I would say if that's the thing that's upsetting you, maybe you should consider the facts rather than the feelings in this case. We're now two hours deep into this piece of shit. I and mean, we have now dug halfway to China. He's, how long has he been talking for? You know, we did another hour long video after this. Shut still up. talking about Barbie. Well, please, Barbie I never knew even knew who Ben Shapiro was, so. This is a new experience for you. Yeah, I didn't know who he was. And he I didn't, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm surprised. I'm sorry, Ben Shapiro, Ben Shapiro's mum and that. But. Now, on the other hand, when it comes to the real world stuff, uh, I do actually feel like I have some criticisms. So one of the weird things about the film is that it does basically the same thing that I've talked about in my last video. The kind of corporate recuperation of critiques of their own brands. Mattel is a character within Barbie. A, a character that's actually depicted, well in some ways as kind of a part of a joke. Um, also somewhat sympathetically. I found it kind of strange how in the part of the film where it's like the Kens have taken over Barbie Land, uh, the Mattel Corporation for some reason uh, cares about this, as if Mattel is not constantly going to prioritize profits over any kind of ethical consideration on like the kind of message they want to promote, as, as if as a corporation they're ever going to really care about anything more than the bottom line. It is in my opinion a strangely sympathetic portrayal of Mattel, even if it does appear to have a kind of criticism in its own sort of ways, uh, and it does lead into a lot of the things that I talked about in that last 
last video. The kind of hellscape reality we live in where large corporations hold such incredible overwhelming power that even critiques of those corporations are co-opted within those corporations. Uh, which is obviously the case. I don't think that Barbie would have been as successful a film as it has been if it wasn't a Barbie film. And you can't make a Barbie film without working with Mattel because that's how copyright works. Mattel owns this brand, so you have to work within the confines of Mattel if you want to make anything resembling a kind of criticism of it. They get to benefit either way. It's the I love Elvis, I hate Elvis badge thing times like a million. And it's one of those things that I can't necessarily criticize the film itself for, even if what I think it leads into is a limitation in terms of the kinds of criticisms the film can make. While at the same time, I am remaining aware of the fact that uh, this is a film mostly made for young girls uh, based on a toy. Because as far as like, real big criticisms I have, I do think that the message is kind of muddied by the fact that the film does present a very simplified view of the feminist reality. The uncomfortable reality that we currently live in is that there are women who are in positions of power, but that they systemically cannot bring about change because they are all working within the system. What the film's really pointing to is this idea of women as a class, and especially a subjugated class. And especially making this point with the Kens, how the Kens essentially exist within the same role, because this doesn't really have anything to do specifically with a masculine or feminine identity. That really this just comes down to a class that has been invented so that a certain group can be subjugated. You, you could say that the problem is the class structure itself that allows groups to be slotted into these camps. A problem that therefore can't be solved by just putting some people in that group in positions of power within this hierarchy thing. Because the hierarchy will still exist and as long as that hierarchy exists it just means that you're always going to have this self-perpetuating problem. The fact is, for whatever provocative language the Barbie movie throws out there that could inspire more thought and consideration by an audience, the actual conflict of the film does get solved in the most safe, inoffensive way humanly possible. The Barbies are saved by being unbrainwashed with a few simple catchphrases and stop the Kens by voting for them to stop. The frustrating thing about this is that it's basically walking back the biggest point the earlier part of the film was making, that Barbie as token representation was not going to solve problems much larger than herself. A problem that is conveniently solved in the film without any need to address or even involve the CEOs and executives who are literally right there. It feels kind of obvious that the film is reflexively pulling back to a more incomplete, moderate take, which is funny in that it's still made right-wing pundits extremely mad, but still a depressing reflection of how restricted this media really is. As a result, I think the film does have a very naive kind of feminist perspective, that essentially these bigger problems can be solved with token representation by votes. Even though there are these, I would say, critiques of liberal feminism, it is basically a liberal feminist product. Because there were limitations to the level of criticism it could make, because it was a Mattel product. And that if you want to find that kind of deep criticism, you're probably not going to find it through children's toys brands. So in a way, the film ends up being kind of overly moderate in a lot of ways. The idea being that we can kind of talk ourselves out of this issue. And again, this is something that is packaged within the film itself. It's making this point about Barbie, about how Barbie could be this thing, telling little girls about how they can do anything, they can be anyone they want to be in this society. And that this is not going to be some revolutionary change for society, because Barbie's just a product. Barbie's just another thing to buy, another thing to consume. Consume in like the flowery academic way. I guess there's probably some kids that literally ate Barbie. I just feel obligated to make that point because there's a lot of people that are not in this like 
anti-woke hysteria crowd uh, who also have had issues with the film and I feel like in large part that's kind of what they've been talking about. As far as just the basic moderate feminist point that the film is making, uh, the funny thing is that if there's any criticism I personally had just on a taste level of the film, it's that it's a little bit patronizing in that it, it actually has a narrator who's basically explicitly telling us all of these themes, all of these plot beats through the film, there's characters that will just explicitly state these things. You know, I was thinking, for me, that maybe it was sort of spoon-feeding it a little bit much. Until I went online and saw the kind of outrage that's surrounding this film, and I realised that, oh no, actually, uh, the film didn't do that enough. Because apparently, uh, it still wasn't quite as obvious as I thought it was. Shad, it's time to accept the duel. I made another video when the Mario film came out and there was a kind of woke outrage around that. And I do think in large part it applies here. Witch hunting these children's franchises so that if you even get the, the sniff of something that doesn't resemble the conservative perspective on the world, that they'd be ostracized from society. Now, in the case of Mario, people found that kind of silly because it was. And with the Barbie movie, people, for the most part, found it kind of silly because it is. But at the same time, I do think that this film has more explicit things to say than that movie. So I do think it is worth talking about. At one point, my mom did lean over and ask, who wrote this, Kathleen Kennedy? On the side of outrage, of course there's going to be the same combination of blatant grift and baffling inability to understand even the most straightforward toy brand media that there always is. You cannot fathom the depths of my bafflement at how little some of these channels understand media. I mean, that was the payoff people were wanting. They were wanting <laughs> Quill and Gamora to get back together. And they built up to do that where she started to appreciate and see herself sacrifice and his quality and stuff like that. And then she's like, nah, still not into you at the end. And then Quill retires and like, and why does this movie act as if Christian somehow deserves what happened to him? Because I'm pretty sure if you reversed the genders here and showed a previously faithful, patient and supportive woman being drugged and coerced into having sex that she didn't particularly want, then being condemned to burn to death by her jealous boyfriend, people would not be singing the praises of this movie in quite the same way. But oh well, I guess this is what empowered female characters look like now. All this insightful feedback got me thinking about the whole concept of themes, what they're for, how they come about, and why they're relevant to media criticism. They're not. But while I do think, obviously, to a large extent, this is just about outrage clicks and engagement, it is also worth pulling back on the simple answer that all of these people are just saying this for money. What I do sense is a lot of sincere, reflexive upset at a film that is not by any means overly complicated, but is trying to navigate a more complex issue. Again, as Gerwig has talked about, being forced to embrace the contradiction and unpack a messy thing. She was invented in 1959 and she exists until now and she's gone through so many different iterations and my mom did not like Barbie and so I had all of that front, in, front of mind of like all the, the ways in which she's a complicated icon and I think um, it, it, instead of... Uh, rejecting all of that we just sort of ran towards it like all of the complications and all of the things that felt thorny was like we'll just let's start there it shows you in a way how to kind of laugh at yourself it's so it's so without judgment it's a very like in inclusive kind of joyful Experience. Through the realities of corporate media, the film had a very narrow opportunity to make a simple point. A point that may better be understood when you allow yourself the most basic consideration for a perspective outside of yourself. Of course, the issue of corporate ownership over discussion remains. None of this matters when a select privileged camp can literally buy their way into manipulating social media platforms so that only those who share their views get their voices heard. Twitter's fun now. Sometimes, do you? Meeting with the man. Uh, 
news alert, the Biden family- What I couldn't help remind myself of as I was watching the film is that it was a film made for young girls. It was a film made for women that have had these experiences uh, to have an opportunity to kind of vent about it. And I think in large part, what I'm seeing a lot of is taking offense to media that doesn't necessarily reflect your perspective on the world. And then you have movies like this that straight up shit on men every moment and say how great women are and somehow in spite of their clear superiority are oppressed by men and you're supposed to swallow all of this and believe it because the news said so the government said so the quote unquote scientists said so Ignore all of observable reality, ignore all of your life experiences, ignore the collective life experiences of most males on the planet. One ghastly man shouts, give us a smile, blondie, which is a phrase that hasn't actually been used in the real, real world since probably the Second World War. And a bunch of men just leer at her and say, give us a smile, blondie which is something that no one under the age of 70 has, has said to a woman in the recent past. Yeah, men don't say that to women anymore. No. Men just don't well, catcall women never anymore. Say, ben Shapiro knows. Seriously? That maybe if you're, say, uh, a medieval knight living in rural Australia, uh, you might not fully understand the perspectives of women living in the modern day. It's the world that insane feminazis who despise men think the world is like. Subversive man-hating. Man-hating and subversive. One of the most blatant man-hating activism. Intolerant, vile, man-hating, subversive. Charged, deranged, subversive, intersectional pieces of insane, hyper-indulgent, third-wave feminist propaganda. Subversive, feminist, <laughs> feminist, man-hating. Anti-male. I have ever seen. Scumbags. Uh, please do me, Shad. I which I was very polite about. I want to do <laughs> I and my mum wants to duel you, yeah. and you haven't, and now, so now it's, you've made it worse Bring for yourself. It. What's up with this dash reverse thing I've been hearing about? Why do you have a sock puppet account on Reddit where you talk about Shad as if you're not Shad? Personally, if I didn't care about someone's Thank criticism you. of me, I probably wouldn't make sock puppet accounts <laughs> and delete co any comment referencing the other person, personally. Because you're too insecure, too much of a child and baby, right, to actually take an honest reflection of what's going on here. And that maybe being able to look outside of yourself for just, just a minute, just a little bit, uh, you might see a world that you wouldn't necessarily be exposed to as someone that doesn't usually have those experiences. It was a fine, fun film. I thought it was just a fun, goofy movie. Did I know coming out of it that there would be the sort of outrage surrounding it that there has been? Kind of, because there's there's kind of been an outrage surrounding most media products of the last few years, uh, because the right cannot seem to stop getting offended by literally anything. Over the next few months, I'm gonna be going through the process of turning myself literally into a Ken doll. Uh, and if you'd like to support me in doing that, you can make sure to follow the links down below to support me on Patreon, or throw me a tip over on Kofi. You can be one of the names scrolling by now. Once again, we live in a hellscape and I'm always happy to be here as your guide uh, as we make our way through this very tedious apocalypse. Am I uncomfortable with the fact that we're at a point where you really can't uh, consume media that is critical of a corporation without either directly or indirectly supporting that exact corporation? Uh, y yeah, yeah, I would say I'm uncomfortable with it, but I I'm also a YouTuber uh, on YouTube. Uh, I am essentially a, a Ken doll. Um, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm like a Marxist Ken. If you wanted to buy the Marxist Ken doll, uh, that would be the same as, as watching one of my YouTube videos. I'm juking right now. I'm juking. I'm just like you. I think that's true. You're just like me. Yes, I can see. We take responsibility. Social commentary? I don't know.